my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Tuesday, I believe, <laughs> May 31st. Where did May go? Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. I just feel like my life is just passing by way too fast. It just, it's really going by fast. It's, the years seem like they're only a month long now. I mean, weeks seem like they're a day. I, it's just unbelievable how fast it seems like it's going by. But in other news, uh, my daughter Rochelle from Ohio is here visiting with her two boys. The boys are going to stay for a couple of weeks. Rochelle's just going to stay for a couple of days and then she's headed back to Ohio. She has not made it back into the doctors yet. Uh, we're still hopefully waiting for a good diagnosis uh, regarding the tumors or appearance of tumors that have been found in uh, her breasts. So we don't know about that yet, but we are hopefully waiting. And I just want to say thank you very much for putting her in your prayers. Uh, I've heard from so many of you and I really do appreciate it. We just have to wait and be hopeful. That's all we can do. The waiting is, as you know, is the hard part. My oldest granddaughter, Kaylee, is graduating tomorrow evening, and that's all the way in the, the St. Louis area, so it's going to be a several hour drive for that. Can't miss the first granddaughter's graduation. Yet there's another party for her on uh, Friday, so it looks like I'll be making two trips up there. <laughs> On other news, I uh, think I mentioned that I went ahead and purchased the Starlink Mobile. Now, this is completely different. You should understand this is completely different than the Starlink that I have been on the waiting list for 15 months. Why one would be available and the other one's not makes no sense to me. Anyway, the Starlink Mobile is a separate internet system that you can purchase from them that is available now and it is shipping now and mine has already shipped. There was a separate cost for it, a separate uh, deposit, you know, type thing for the equipment and a separate monthly fee. So it's $135 a month, which is very expensive and it the speeds on it are not quite as good as the permanent Starlink installation. But the advantage of the Starlink Mobile is you can take it pretty much with you anywhere and set it up and use it anywhere, which I think is pretty cool. But, uh, and the other advantage of the Starlink Mobile is that it's on a month to month basis. So if you want to disconnect it, you know, for a month, you can do that. You can turn it off. Uh, the speeds on that should be adequate to do everything I want to do and then some. So we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, hopefully I'll get it either tomorrow or the next day. It should be here pretty soon, I think. In other news, I've got two tractors that are tore up right now. The John Deere 950, which we inherited from a friend. We didn't buy that one. It's a really nice four-wheel drive tractor and that's probably the shining thing on that tractor is that it is four-wheel drive. And since I haul so much firewood, it's perfect for pulling trailers up and down these steep hills uh, because of the four-wheel drive. The, especially the down with a heavy loaded trailer, it, that four wheel drive is very important. That one and our Massey Ferguson 35 both have the same problem and that is that the clutches have stuck on both of them or are wore out, whichever way you want to look at it. And I believe they're actually wore out in these cases. Uh, I've done all the adjustments I can do on the clutches, on the pedals, etc. And there's nothing left to, to make them work. So both of those tractors are going to have to be broken in half and separated. And I mean literally broken down the middle in half. There's a, a, you know, like where the transmission bolts to the engine, you break it apart there and you push the back end of the tractor that way, you push the front end that way. I mean, literally you break them in half. It is not a simple job. I've done it once on my Ford tractor. My, fortunately, my Ford 4000 is operating fairly well. The reason I want the Massey Ferguson fixed is because of hay season. Well, actually, I should call it hay week. We spend about one week doing hay here every year. It's much better because it does have the double clutch. It has enough horsepower to operate the baler, and that double clutch is very handy because you push it down partway and it stops the tractor's forward motion. You push it down the rest of the way and it stops the PTO on the baler. So the point of stopping the forward motion is you're not 
feeding any new hay in and you can you can uh, let the baler catch up and that's very handy so that MF 35 needs to be fixed immediately so I'm gonna have to just bite the bullet and start tearing it apart I guess then yet on some more other news, John Manura's AccuSlice, you've seen it in my videos, it hooks up to your bandsaw and you can accurately slice very, very thin slices of wood off of a, like say a, a three quarter inch plank board. Uh, you can do that for the backs, for the sides of guitars, etc. It's a very accurate system. I want to be very clear about this. John Manura does not know I'm talking about this. He is not paying me, obviously. I am not sponsored by him. I am not committed to him in any way. I only bring it up because I saw that he has a new system, even more robust AccuSlice, if you will, uh, more stable, heavier duty. I'm sure it's very expensive, but I wanted to mention it to you and in case you wanted to check it out, I'll try to remember to put a link in my video description and you can check it out. And if you do check it out, please tell him that Jerry Rosa sent you. I said this before and I'll say it one more time, and that is that I thought that I wouldn't need that system, that I could just as accurately cut wood off of my fence, but I absolutely 100% guarantee you, unless you're way better at it than I am, you cannot do that. You cannot beat his system on cutting out thin, accurate slices of wood. I tried it a bunch of times and I cannot slice them on a fence like I can slice them on his AccuSlice. The only reason I harp on that is because if you're new getting into this business and if money is only a secondary consideration, well then I would very seriously give this some thought, especially if you plan to build a lot of instruments I wouldn't give it thought if you're only building one instrument. There's just no point in it. But if you're going to build a bunch of instruments and or you're going into the business of selling sides as sets, which could easily be a business, then for sure you're going to want this AccuSlice system or something very similar. So look for that link in the description. I think I've covered all my information here. We are playing tonight in Rolla there at the uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit, so uh, that'll start around 6 or so. It's only going to be Beverly and I because the rest of the guys are all off camping and going attending other festivals and things. So it's just going to be the two of us. And so that's going to be a different kind of a jam. We're going to see how that goes. I may try to film some of that also. That's assuming we can get all the stars to align. <laughs> then there's two more things I want to bring up. I've got a short video that I want to show you right now. And that is on how I make my straps on the mandolins. How I tie them. So I'm putting, I've got a video that uh, you'll see here in just a moment and it'll show you how to make these straps. So you can watch that right now. You know, it's time to put a strap on this new mandolin. And I just take some paracord. I make sure the ends are burnt so that they don't unravel. You know, you can just take a match or anything and just melt the end and then take like a paper towel and, and go like that to make sure the end is all stuck together. That's all I do. Then I make a hangman's noose on one end to start with. I have six foot of cord here, by the way, and that's, I think that's going to be enough, although that, that may be need to be adjusted for whatever size person you are. That's uh, about the, what I need for me. And uh, you, it's better to start with more cord. You can always cut it off. I just happen to have this piece laying around, so I'm, I'm just starting with that. Anyway, what you do is you just go down about, oh, maybe a foot from the end and you kind of bend it like so. And then go down a few inches, I don't know, maybe at the, so the length of that set of loops there is maybe five inches long, something like that. So you've got this extra loose end here. So again, all I did was just go down about a foot like this, bend it in half, and then take that short piece and bend it back again except that I I pull it up so that it's only about five inches or so and I have another five inches or so hanging out so maybe I had a little more than a foot there I'm not really sure but anyway you can see what I'm doing I just make it kind of a double loop thing like so and then you just start you just this this 
loop end that's toward the very end, not the one down here in the middle, but the one on the end, you just start wrapping the loose end around that. And you, you just wrap and then you, you know, you just progressively go further away from that loop. So you're just wrapping it tight like that. And, you know, I would say about five wraps is probably good enough. The original hangman noose, I think they did 13. I don't think we need to go to that extreme. But about five wraps approximately is, is good. And then you just take the loose end and you go back through the hole on that end. That's all you do. Then you find whichever one of these, <clears throat> you pull on the one that will shrink that loop. <clears throat> there it is right there. And so now you've pulled it up tight around there. So there you go. <clears throat> now, I have a little more extra sticking out there. I can cut this off and remelt it and I might do that later, but right now I'm not gonna worry about that. Now this end, you can start on either end, whichever you're most comfortable with. It's, for me, I generally start on the, on the uh, tail end and I'll just pull this up tight. <clears throat> so I put it on there, like so, and then I just pull it up tight. And when you pull it up pretty tight like that, it won't go anywhere. It won't slide off of there. It's, it's pretty good knot. It's not going to turn loose on you. So then what I do <clears throat> is I go ahead and put the strap on the way I like to have the strap on, which is over my sh shoulder all the way. Uh, some people just put it over one shoulder, but I like it around my neck and shoulder. And then I just take this and pull it in to here. And then I just hold the mandolin, you know, I'm just, I've got this loose end here, like so. Then I just hold the mandolin about where I think it's comfortable, like, oh, about right there. You know, you just kind of wherever you think it's good. And then you just kind of try to hold that spot. Then you take it back out of the mandolin, like so. So you just call it, hold that loop there. That's the, that's the end of your loop. Then you just double this back like we did before and whatever amount you think you need. And then you just start wrapping again, leave the big loop there to go around your, around your scroll. And again, about five wraps or so is, is plenty good. And it looks like my six foot length for me is gonna be just about right. I'm actually making maybe one more wrap on this one because I can and I'll pull it back up through there then once again you just you hold all that together and then you find the one that pulls the little loop up tight and you keep adjusting this until you get it you know nice and snug and uh, like so so I've got that pulled up now I'll put this back on my mandolin like like so and we are basically finished. Now I'll put it on and see how it feels. That's just about right. Now you notice it's a little bit loose here. What's nice about that is if you have a small person that wants to play your mandolin, you can just pull this up and it's, it's self-adjusting. See, I've raised my mandolin up quite a bit higher there or I can put it all the way down if I really want to and it's way down here. So whatever's comfortable for you, and it pretty much holds there if once you get it where you want it, you just, you know, you can tighten it up a little bit more. This knot is brand new, so it's not as tight as it otherwise might be. The rounder your cord is, the better too. This cord here is a, not exactly round. It's a little bit on the flat side, so it's not quite the best cord for this. So when you buy a cord, you might want to get the rounder one. And you know, a, a cord that's a decent diameter. Hope you enjoyed that. It's a fairly simple way uh, to make your own strap. Now, I absolutely prefer this strap over the big wide straps or any other kind of strap. I prefer this, I really do. I, it's not a being a cheap thing or anything like that. It might be a lazy thing. The reason I like it is I can put it in any case and I don't even have to worry about it. It just goes in the case without any hassle on my part at all and I don't have to fold it, tuck it, all those kinds of things you have to do with those other bigger straps. 
this just goes in the case in any form, fashion I want to put it in there. So it works really good for that reason. So that's the main reason I use that as my strap. I know a lot of people give me grief. Can't you afford a better strap than that for that mandolin? Well, it's not that I can't afford it. It's that this is what I prefer. I hope you enjoyed that video on how I make my straps. The very last thing I want to mention is that I have had a serious offer on this mandolin. And while I am very appreciative of the offer, and it is a good offer, and it is a very serious offer, I am not wanting to sell it. I really do not want to sell it. I've already mentioned what my minimum price is that I would not sell it for, which was, and I might as well say that again, that's $25,000. Certainly this offer was more than $25,000. i am not going to say what the offer was because I don't want to get into an auction. You know, in other words, if I told you the exact amount, then somebody would say, well, would you take this much, you know, and add another whatever amount to it. And so I'm not saying that because I don't want people to think that's what I'm trying to do is auction it off for a higher price. That's not it at all. I really don't want to sell it. Mama didn't raise no fool. I don't own anything that I wouldn't sell. So just so you understand that, I mean, I'm not a fool, but on the other hand, I really do want to keep this mandolin. I will keep it until I get an offer that I just can't refuse. And that's just the bottom line. I really do want to keep it. And that's why I'm not mentioning the numbers because I just don't want to encourage a bidding war. I will just tell you this, the offer was from someone in Alaska. It was a, a deal where, uh, you know, I would keep it and until, it, until they get it paid off. And apparently they would have to make three or four payments on it, which I don't have a problem with that. There's no risk to me on that because I'm going to keep it and play it. And, and in fact, he said, I would like for you to keep playing it. And he says, it'll just put good mojo in it. <laughs> But uh, regardless of that, I am going to have to decline that offer. Yeah, my wife and my daughter that's here are in support of that decision as well. So that's all I can tell you about it. I hope your day will be good. I hope you enjoyed this little video update. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>